Welcome to Hammer and Nails with Skip and Allison Bedell. We're finally recording. That's it? That's where we're starting? (laughs) (laughs) That's exciting. Hi, everybody. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. <gasps> it's you my say birthday. It's your birthday. Yeah, it's my birthday. <laughs> it's your birthday too. Yeah. Wow, I can't even believe it. I made it to another one. Oh my god, <laughs> people! Yeah, it is the birthday of Mr. Skipadel. It is, and Are I'm you... I'm feeling like the birthday boy today. Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I wish it felt more birthday-ish for yeah. you. Um. Well, it kind of does. Well, we had a day off together. We, we did. Yeah, together. it's nice. We had a beautiful breakfast. We did. Oh, my God. Which I'm very God. happy about. There's this it's always place. good when you go somewhere and somebody else cooks for you. Yeah. And you can have, like, an awesome meal and, like, you don't have to do anything. It's one of those. That's the best. Oh, the, oh, the place, though, too. It's one of these places in Port Jefferson. And it's got, it's like a breakfast lunch place. And they have, like, gourmet breakfasts and just, oh, God. And they got awesome um, coffee. Yeah, if cappuccino. you guys are in New York, you're in the oh. Long Island area, get to Port Jefferson and check out a place called Toast. Oh, and it's just so awesome. We had awesome breakfast. And yeah. I should have taken a picture of it. Some people some people like food porn. Never really gotten really too far into that. Um, but it was really, you know, I, I get, I take these pictures and then it's like, the most boring picture in my phone, and I ultimately end up. It's like a picture of a it. plate of eggs and pancakes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some people have Instagrams entirely dedicated to that. Hey, I guess whatever turns you on, right? Hey, you know what turns me on is the uh, Hammernails Podcast dot com. Yes, thank you guys for listening again. We want to thank you for keep for coming back. I'm just stuttering today. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. <laughs> it's one of those uh, days. You're back. We're back. Here and we are. I also added us to Google Play Music. Oh, right. You would tell me about yeah. that. Yeah. So we're on there. We're on. We're... we're it's an iHeartRadio. You working on uh, that that's, too? No, that I already... It's already loaded to them, but they... Because there's so many podcasts that they are taking now, they... So like, we're only taking the good ones. No, so. it's not that. <laughs> but they have to approve it. Before, you know, and so that means that they they are manually listening to whatever that they put on. So, oh like, man, wait till, to, wait till they hear some of the stuff not, we talk about. They're not going to listen to all of our episodes, but they want to see what each one is. They have to approve it. So you guys are in the R-rated classification. Well, sometimes we are. Yeah. Not as much as we used to all be. All the time. I hope. Well, <laughs> in private. Right. So we're just waiting for that. But we are on YouTube. All of the episodes. We are on. Uh, How many are they now? Like ah uh, god, it's we like a hundred something. Yeah, we yeah we're up to a hundred. I think this one is a hundred and eleven or twelve. Wow. Yeah. It's so amazing. That's, yeah, that's very. That exciting. went fast. It did, right? Right. Yeah. It's just over a year ago that we started, and we haven't missed one. It's so cool though, because so many people give us great feedback. Everybody seems to like like all the tips and stuff, yeah. and it's just fun. We get a lot of like great questions, a lot of feedback from our listeners. We want to thank you guys for always people participating, and thank you for telling your friends about our podcast. Thank and, you guys who for, who called in the last time, and we're going to do that again today. Oh, that was great. Yeah, yeah. that was that Little was fun. Facebook live calls. Yeah, that was fun, and and people got to say hi, and I hope that, that people plan ahead and think about a question. That they can ask, and right. so that they can get used to doing a little bit of a segment live. That's yeah, exciting. that's always a good time. I actually get some like uh, Facebook calls from people. Like sometimes I have no idea who they are, and it's like, hmm. I never answer them. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to be answering that. No, you know what? I think that's rude. Actually, if you are not like a personal friend who has actually given you their phone number, or if you have not agreed in advance to take a phone call you know like hey let's talk on facebook messenger i think it's rude when people try to call well i'm just thinking like you know you get some like pretty absurd stuff sent to you sometimes especially like on private messages and things like that you know like we talked about that like some you know some pictures and some other things so i'm thinking like all right if they're sending that stuff over on private message i wonder like what kind of phone call i'm gonna get so tell you what kind of it's phone only like with people i don't know you know so like there's there's a lot of fans of the show and stuff and like you know, there's, like, people on Facebook, like, you don't know everybody, okay, obviously. Let's, let's just be clear, though, about the type of phone calls that both of us have received or uh, people have attempted to make to us. They're from, 
like third world countries. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, for the, for the most part, it's like uh, princess uh, something, and and she she wants, or, or it's like some dude who like uh, he, he needs to like get. You know, a hundred thousand dollars to the United States, and but you know he needs someone, part, someone's account to no, put it in. And, yeah, trying, there's some kind of scam going. On. It's not even. I don't even know why the fuck they're calling because we don't answer the, the call. But as soon as I and you know what, sometimes they keep calling. Like, like stop it, you asshole. <laughs> so what I just started doing was um, blocking them. Like as soon as I get a phone call from somebody that I am not expecting, that I do not want, and they make more than one. I block them, like because obviously that person is without any kind of common sense. Well, yeah, sometimes like you know we want to get the calls, uh, especially from the people that we know and that have yeah, great like I'm not gonna like try to like you know go on Facebook Messenger and call Rhonda Rousey and actually expect her to answer the phone. Well, she might for you. But... No, she won't <laughs> because I'm a stranger. You wish that she Who's would. Like, though? You know what I mean? Like it's like. You know, well, well yeah. What would you say wow. to him if she answered? <laughs> You'd be like, oh, shit, you actually answered. Uh, you know what? I don't even know what I would say if she answered. You'd be like, how are you this. doing? I wouldn't be calling her to begin with because I don't do that. But, you know, remember when um, – actually, they still have the do not call list registry. You um, know, there's a reason for that. It's because people don't want phone calls that they aren't expecting that – from people that they don't know. Like, I don't if, – if I don't know you at all, really – I'm not, I don't want to talk to you. I don't, I don't have, I really, does anybody want to talk to anybody that they don't know just randomly and answer the phone and like, no, you know, can you just put him on the floor, pick him up nicely and just put him on the floor? Yeah, I can. Will you? Because you're just pushing him and he's not, he doesn't want to leave. I mean, if he's not doing anything, leave him alone, but, um, and I have been getting a shit ton of garbage calls lately on the cell phone from solicitors. Every single one of them is, is one of two things. One of them is, congratulations, you've just won a cruise to the Bahamas. Oh, the That's old, the old cruise call. Yeah. And the other one is, congratulations, your business just won, like, I think, like, I think to get a loan or something like my business, because I usually just hang up when I hear your business has won. Wait, is it the Click. special cruises that you used to go on? Is that, no. That, is that kind of cruise? No. <laughs> Nobody's calling me to tell me I won that, because that those were very, those were twice the price of straight people cruises. Really? Yeah, twice the price. Now, what do you think that's about? Like, if you go on, like, on a lesbian because cruise, like, it's all, it's all chicks, right? So, like, yeah. you got to pay extra They charter more. the boat. It's a company that charters the boat. It's not... Like um, Royal Caribbean is is booking these reservations. Uh-huh. They are just it's it's almost like um, uh, um, like if you have a party at a catering hall. You right. know what I mean? Like you're renting the boat. The travel company for lesbians um, charters <laughs> rents there, the cruise. There's a travel company just for lesbians. Yes, it's called yeah. Olivia. Um, they're, they've been around a long time and they're very good at what they do and, oh, very professional. Um, and others have tried and not succeeded to do the same thing because there's a lot involved in, in it. So, so th- there's no, the there's no guys on the whole boat. I mean, like, yeah, even, there is oh, the, there the is. employees of the cruise ship, uh, like the guys, you know, like the, whoever's there on don't a regular man hating now. No, 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 not, not hating on the men at all. I'm not. Um, yeah, no, you're not. No, you know what? The. Um, oh, the guys on the, on the cruise are the same ones that are on when you go on a regular cruise, the same staff. They right. live on the ship. Right. And I have never had a problem with any of them. They're always re- entirely respect respectful. It's right. because they, that's their job. Right. You know, they're not going to be any different just because there's lesbians on the cruise. And I think I told you in the past that I had one of those vacations through Olivia at uh, Turks and Caicos. Uh-huh. And it, it was at a Club Med resort. I fucking hated it. It was not nearly as good as the cruises. And I did not like the fact that there were so many men employees, which was fine because it's just like on the cruises. But on a club med resort, the people that are working there also live there, just like the people who work on a cruise. Right, right. So in their free time, they're hanging out at the same places where the guests are, like at the bar or at the pool. Now, when I'm going on a lesbian vacation, I don't want to hang out with a dude at the pool or a dude at the bar. I want them to be serving me or not be there at all. You know what I mean? So, yeah. That's that's interesting. Yeah. That's, yeah. And the guy that's working there thinking like, man, look at all these chicks. Mm-hmm. It must be like chick week. Like, what's going on? Is it like like a teacher's convention they or something? They know what it is before and then they're we like, get there. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah, right. Well, Wee. maybe not unless they see something that they like. I don't know. But um, yeah, so that that. Yeah, I don't know how we even got on that topic. I don't know. How the fuck did what? we get there? I don't know, there? you brought up cruises or something. I don't know. How the f- oh, because I want to cruise. Oh, right. To the Bahamas. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I, you know what? And I checked the do not call registry after I got these calls, because every time I get even one call, I go onto the iPhone and I block the number, block the number, block. Well, they, they call from a hundred different, they never call from the same number twice, right. by the way. So it's like you can't get the phone calls to end. So I went online to the do not call registry to, because you, you used to have to re- register your phone i could think every three years now once you do it it you're on forever so what you do is you verify that you're on the list and you have to give your email and your phone number so i verify that you and i are both on the list so at that point once you are i'm on, on the, the do list, not call lesbian cruise list you're on the do <laughs> not- <laughs> that's not the list um so I then filed the complaint. There's a complaint page. So you put in the phone number that called you at the time that they called you. Have you ever done business with them before? Yes or no? Um, Did you tell them to stop calling you? Yes or no? Was it an automated machine that started talking? Yes or no? And then click, like send. And then that's it. Yeah, but they, they pursue those complaints. You know, because these are all recordings that I'm getting. Every time I answer the phone, it's a recording. Congratulations. You, you just, just won. won a free trip. Fuck you, fucking <laughs> fuck. Oh, my God. I swear. Please call to collect your sweepstakes winnings. You know what I'm going to do, actually? It just You're a millionaire. <laughs> Remember Joe? He actually takes the call and entertains it. Like, and, Oh, he's awesome. Yeah. And he says some yeah. fucked up shit yeah. to, on the, to them. Yeah. Oh. He'll, he'll do, he does like a whole jerky boys routine with them. Oh, like he'll, yeah. he'll just even, like, he, he'll yeah. be like, uh, uh, what? <laughs> I'm sorry. Could you speak up a little bit? Oh, wait. Uh, um, I need to find my glasses. Oh, wait, just wait one second. I'll be right back. <laughs> And he keeps him on the phone for like 30 yeah, minutes. Yeah. Um, oh, are you still there? Yeah. All right, wait right there. I'll be right back. Yeah. So the next time they call <laughs> me to tell me that my business just won a business loan, they're going to ask. I'm going to talk to somebody. I'm going to stay on the line. And then they're going to ask me about my business. And I'm going to tell them about my giant dildo business. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to say I need a lot extra money. I didn't know you had the, that business. Because the latex or whatever costs so much money. And I want to make giant dildos, like two feet dildos for those hookers with giant holes. Two feet. That's what I'm going to do. What are you going to do with all that dildo? <laughs> That's a lot. <laughs> I'm going to like really Can get you imagine detail. like the guy on the other end of the phone? Like he, he's like they're trying funny. to sell you something and you're like, listen, I just need more latex. All right. Can you help me with that? If you got latex, if you could sell me some latex, I'll take that. You know what? Where is that zucchini? I don't know. Oh, uh, that thing is huge. Oh, my God. So I just picked a zucchini out of the garden. Now, zucchinis, if you've never grown one before or any, they they suddenly take off. It's like, oh, we're growing a zucchini in the garden. And then like three days later, it's gigantic. And if you read up on when to pick zucchinis, they tell you about like when it's about six inches long, maybe about an inch wide. So about two, three or three years ago, I had one that I didn't know this, that it was the first ones I ever grew. And when I went back to check on it, this thing was out of fucking control. It was like maybe four, what was about this? Four inches wide. It was about five, four inches four. in diameter. Right. So about as big around as a softball. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it was probably about <coughs> at least a foot and a half long. Yeah. It was like two feet long. It was tremendous. And it was, but, and you know what? Some people think, say that, um, well, that's only good for zucchini bread at that point. But you know, it was good. I sliced it and bread. Yeah, it no, actually it was it. really it was, good. It was fine. It was totally delicious. So I saw another one growing uh, in our garden last, this past week and I picked it, but it's got a strange shape to it. It's like all long, like big and it's fat and long. But a section of it, it, all of a sudden it gets smaller. It's like about an inch diameter for about maybe a couple inches long. So it's like big and then it gets real skinny at the other end. Right. Well, one end of it is probably about three inches wide and right. about maybe for about, I don't know, 10, 10 inches a foot. And then it goes down to like one, like a crazy little like, it's like, a little, it's like little, a tail. It's like a little brother, like a tail of it that comes <laughs> right. out of it. <laughs> right. And Skip says to me, this end is for the front and this end is for the back. <laughs> Multifunctional. Uh, that's oh, funny. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's a special kind of salad. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. So, so that's fun. Sure, money, you all don't come over here for dinner. <laughs> don't eat the salad. Yeah, no, I'm having fried zucchini for dinner. 
Yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, and I'm in the I'm in the midst of trying to grow more things. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It is your birthday. It's my birthday. Yeah. Oh, you want to tell the peeps what I got you for your birthday? Yeah, well, you might have already seen on Facebook, I got an awesome new 16-gauge uh, nailer from DeWalt that you very kindly hooked up with our good friends over there and have so, them, yeah. so have them send it to me, me just in time. But that I didn't have to pay for. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting, how you, how you, how you finagled that one. Yeah. You were like, look, it's, it's, it's from me, but it's not really from me. It's from DeWalt. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're awesome. They're always yeah. sending me over stuff. And, and like, also, the timing of course, was great. Of course, our friends over at Milwaukee, the same thing. You guys are always, yeah. they're always great sending, like, really great tools and stuff but yeah. you managed to get me something that i've been wanting for quite a while which is a new finish nail or 16 gauge nail or battery operated which i use the shit out of my other one i use it every single day i've worn it out i've had it for years and then yesterday i you brought in the uh packages off the porch yeah that come every day um the on time every day it's just like the, the U, yeah the UPS guy is just like a revolver like he yeah. just automatic like his truck is automatically programmed to turn on yeah. our block basically yeah so yeah sure enough here it comes the box from Dewalt I'm like ooh what's that very exciting yeah that was awesome yeah that was a great so I gift. took a little video of Skip uh, with his old um, what is it framer nail gun no nail finish gun, gun. and finish gun the not new framer. finish gun sorry yeah I don't know what I'm saying um, so yeah you so there's a video right. up on Facebook and I also put it on our website. Uh, the the main page, the home page of our website, you can see the video. So you can go to hammernailspodcast.com. Yeah, that's when I first opened it to get out of the, the box. Homepage. She like she pulls out the iPhone and starts recording. Yay! You do that to me a lot too. Fortunately, you don't post most of those videos because yeah. <laughs> you like do all these yeah. candid videos that I'm not even I don't even know I'm being videoed half the time. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to be well, sure not to piss you off because I don't know what the hell you're going to fit. Yeah. Oh, I have some stuff still. That's uh, good. I got some of you too. Yeah. Yeah. You do? Yeah. No, you don't. I do. There's nothing to record. You never know. I do know. Mm-mm. I, no. <laughs> anyway. Um, so and you got me something else too. I did get you. You got me other, another really cool gift actually, which I, I never would have seen coming. Um, so... One of the walls that we're, you know, we're, we're doing this remodel here in our house, as you guys, I'm sure, have been hearing about for months. And, yes, we're in the final stages, and it's looking awesome if you've checked any of the pictures. But one of the walls that we're doing, uh, an exterior wall where there's a sliding patio door that goes outside, is going to be uh, covered with a brick veneer. So, basically, it's like a, um, a system of uh, – um, it's like a half-inch thick – actual brick real brick that we get reclaimed from you know you can get them from like you know new york buildings or chicago wherever they all come in different uh colors and some are like aged and you know there's a whole like uh history of where they come from but you can adhere these to the wall and then we go back and mortar them with regular brick mortar and it's basically a brick wall but it's only a half inch thick so it's it's a great way to get that look and anyway it's it's, a, it's an authentic brick that yeah, no, came it's, from it's, buildings it's, that it's they took absolutely, down absolutely you know brick that we mortar and just like a regular brick wall only it's not structural through the whole wall to where they're stacked and only it's, and it's not new it's actual vintage no, yeah, right. so they said it's like yeah. reclaimed from, you know, they, they took it down from some buildings, and which is actually really cool because there's history behind all of them. So anyway, we're in the process of ordering all those bricks right now. They'll be here soon, and we're going to get that wall bricked up. It's one of the final stages of, the, of, of this remodel. But what did I get today, which is so cool, I thought, um, because we have all these samples of brick faces that we're going to be putting up. And then I unwrapped this package, and it was actually a brick. That was, you know, slice the front half of it like we're getting, like we're going to be putting on the wall, just like that. Only you had etched in it. I don't even know how, who you had to do this, but it was like some sort of like a laser etching or however they did it into the face of the brick. Um, established date and the date um, 2016. 20, 2016 and then designed and built by Skip Bedell. And it was so cool because like that's going to get that's going to be one of the thousand bricks that are mortared onto that wall. It's going to be kind of just placed in there someplace yeah. uh, to live forever in, in the, our in our in home our historical so house. yeah i think that's really cool so mm-hmm. when we're long gone and somebody's in this house in ma- years, many gonna... years down the road they'll be like <laughs> oh yeah oh well huh? what do you know yeah i wonder who that was you know what because <laughs> i wonder that about our house as well like i want to know the history of our house who lived in it and right. you know it had been expanded it, it's so old and all I know about it from our previous owners that they had learned about it was that nudists used to live here. I think I mentioned before. 
How appropriate. Yeah. You know, and that there was some family that lived here for a while with kids and their kids were staying we're up in the We're the modern day nudists that live here now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's a lot different than it used to be. We've changed this place a lot. And so I just think it's really I, – I'm into the history thing, so I think it's really cool. So. Yeah, well, this house was actually built back in the 40s, like right uh, – you know, right smack in the middle of like World War Two. So there's like it was a pretty historical time, a yeah. lot going on in the country and like some of the elements of this house, like this big field stone fireplace that's in the middle of the living room and some of the other really cool features of the home actually kinda of tell a story. And when I was out when we first got the property, the first thing that I did was get a uh, bobcat and uh, some excavation machines and stuff, and I dug up the whole yard. And that's when we did all the outside, the, you know, all the landscaping and everything outside. And we regraded everything and made all these berms and hills and all kinds of crazy stuff out there. But anyway, so I took out a lot of the back of the property and had giant piles of dirt everywhere. And every once in a while, you know, we just see something like in the dirt, like a rock or like, and a few times I had found um, a couple of old like Pepsi bottles and Coke bottles and stuff oh, yeah, that were from really cool. like the old vintage style bottles. Okay, yeah, that over there, that um, pocket watch. Yeah, there's actually <laughs> a silver pocket watch that was, I found in the dirt. And, you know, oh, cool. obviously it's, you know, it's, in, the, it's, it's very, it's be, very beat up, yeah, but it's, 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 it's fucking cool. It's beat up because it was packed under the dirt for probably, you know, 80 years. Uh, but sure enough, there it is, and I got all these really cool, like or vi- more, you know, vintage glass. Yeah, who knows? It could have been here before the people. I don't. I, I can't yeah, get sure. a date off of it because it's got a lot of corrosion on it. But um, it's it's very old. I mean, and I love the Pepsi bottle. It's a it's of course a vintage, old glass Pepsi bottle, and I I love that thing. And and for the longest time, I was putting roses in it. It still has the garden. Pepsi logo yeah, on it. Yeah, still got the logo, and it's got and like a little twist. It's a really cool yeah. The glass model. is like twisted, yeah. like you know, it's like really ornate looking glass. Yeah. And it's actually the logo on it is in pretty good condition. It is, and it's and it's old looking. Though. Yeah, it, it was very vintage. deep in the ground too. And how I ever dug it up with the machine and didn't break it. Yeah. But I actually found a few bottles out there that I brought in a couple of little what looked to be like perfume bottles. Uh, there was uh, some coins. There and, were toys. Uh, there was a couple of <laughs> old a couple of old old toys, like really old, like uh, cast metal, like matchbox cars, and just a bunch of stuff that I found out. So there, now, in a hundred years, when um, the the kids of tomorrow start um, excavating the property for whatever reason, if they do again. Mm-hmm. The kids of tomorrow are not going to excavate shit. The kids of tomorrow can barely change their goddamn shoes. <laughs> well, well, the kids of going, today can barely change know, their shoes. So, well, where I was going with that is um, our pet cemetery. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh my god! The whole upper part of the property, like where there's hills back there in the property, is where the, yeah. yeah, there's there's already a number of uh, of headstones up there. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> And I made some pretty serious boxes, so probably like yeah. when they dig them up, I mean they're going to be like in full mummified condition. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not like they went in a, you know, in a burlap bag in the you know the ground and they got all eaten up and nothing but bones. I mean they're yeah. they're going to be like full, full on like body. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and I put you know things in there with them like mementos and flowers, and I wrap them nicely in their blankies, make sure that they're warm and. Can safe. you imagine like? Like, because they're sealed up. I yeah. mean, they're in like plastic yeah. bags, and so container I'm thinking, inside a plastic, inside of another plastic, and then inside of a con- contractor bag, sealed it off. Yeah, just, I'm thinking yeah. like you know, like whatever decomp and whatever's going on in there is probably sealed in there, yeah. and like so, somebody might open that up like 200 years from now, and it's going to be like. Like a like a body bomb, <laughs> it's going to oh. be an explosion of funk is going to come out of that no, thing, right? No, it doesn't last like that. It it's kind of like fart in a bottle. <laughs> Did, have you ever farted in a bottle? Yes. Yeah. Really? Yeah, and it works. Really? Yeah, yeah. How much later did you open it? Like a month. <gasps> Are you fucking kidding me? Totally How do serious. I not know this? I'm totally serious. When we were kids, we used to do stupid shit like that. Yeah. <gasps> So yeah. you put what? like a jar, kind of like you know, like a, like a, a jar. A, yeah, like a. Um, so you put a jar to your ass and farted in it, and yeah. then capped it up. Yes. And then a month later, opened it. Yes. and Smelled it. Yeah. My grandmother used to have those jars. She'd make like jam, like jelly yeah. out of, and it had like the glass tops, and you'd have the metal thing. You buckle it down and had like a rubber seal, yeah. and they were completely sealed up tight. So when we were kids, we got into her her cellar. She had like the cellar under her house where she had all those jars, and we thought it would be funny if like we farted into the glass. That is funny. <laughs> yeah, and we left the down there sealed 
up. <laughs> Did you leave them down there for her to open? Yeah. Them for an experiment for you <laughs> yeah. to open. No, we opened them up like a couple months later, and they so we knew they worked. But yeah, I left a couple down there for her. I just figured like eventually. How fucking cool is that? <laughs> I'm sure she didn't think so. <laughs> Do you think the hedge did she do you think she ever opened one of them? I don't know. She never said anything, but I'm imagining. But that I she... mean like you were expecting the the stink, so you probably put your nose right near it when you opened it. Whereas she, if she were to open it, I don't think that she would realize what happened. Maybe, maybe not. Depends on you well, know. If she it knew depends it you. on the potency, I suppose. <laughs> Wow, that's yeah. like disgusting and funny at the same time. Yeah, it's a very true story. It's very clever. There you go. That's exciting. I want to send a fart to somebody. I think they actually have like fart grams and stuff. They have like, if you look it up, like you can actually get like a, uh, remember remember my cousin Matt sent me um, yeah, in the Ziploc, a, in a Ziploc bag. bag. Yeah, <laughs> but I don't know if there was really a fart in there. Cause when oh, it, there was. There was. Oh. Well, I didn't notice anything. When Last I the year, like the reunion, we went and we spent the weekend, which we're going to uh, coming up pretty soon, by the way. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I left my flip flops at the pool at the house down in the New Jersey Shore. And I love these flip flops because I've had them for, I don't know, even how many years. They're reefs. They're really good. They're just comfortable. They like molded to my feet. And I've had them forever. And like they just don't die. So, um, so yeah, so I, I, I texting him like hey man if you get a chance you know like throw them in the mail whatever just send them back to me you know so sure enough they came and sealed in a ziploc bag now knowing cousin matt oh, they put a note with it yeah yeah it was some like some warning note yeah, or whatever yeah. and you know knowing cousin matt you know he's he's like a walking gas bomb you know and basically well, it's we, it's so fucking awesome though that you it's guys like a symphony over there when we go we, we all get together it <laughs> is going to be a major fart fest next yeah. weekend <laughs> Oh my god! Oh my it's god! It's just like a contest, right? Yeah, it's just it's just so crazy. I was kind of disappointed though last last uh, summer though because like I, I don't know what was going on, but like I had nothing, man. I was like I was you, like yeah, what? it was it yeah, was, I was like, like you were an embarrassment to. Farts. I was I I was really I was an embarrassment to myself. I'm like yeah. really yeah like I like I walk around like on full cue at any any <laughs> any given time any given time like on on demand like full on demand. 24 7 and then like i get out there with like all the pros and i'm like oh you guys don't even know what's up i'm gonna show and they're like i, I had i had nothing and they even like had the whole weekend recordings in their phone like we do oh we have a lot of fart recordings. you know what i was just going through my phone a couple of days ago through the recording thing because you know I had yeah like, you really don't need to play that on the podcast no no no, no but i'm just i'm not going to play them <laughs> not like I, well, why i'm not, sure but, people don't really want to hear but no, that i just this for a long long time i was just recording things on on the iPhone since I had like the iPhone 3 you know right and so I was failing to title them so I just had hundreds of recordings that were not titled so I didn't know what they were so I literally sat they're just like a bunch of like five second recordings well some of them are and some of them were like when I was going through my divorce I would you know record the conversations with the ex you know just in Uh. case she got out of hand or you know did something fucked up so um I went through and I. Well, those are always fun to find. Well, yeah, you know, and and. and oh, and I, I, rem- also, I remember I, that argument. I also recorded you drunk. Oh, so that's you, always um, fun too. But then the thing is, when I record it, then I forget that I recorded it. You know, so then it's like on there, like taking up all this space forever because I never listened to it again. So I actually sat and listened to my recordings to get rid of the junk. There was a ton of karaoke in there. Why do I record it? Because it, it's horrible. Yeah, just Horrible. just so you know, people, if you if you haven't done this already, don't do it. If you're if you're out there doing karaoke with your friends, going to a bar, enjoy or whatever, it, have whatever, fun. Don't record it though, because as good as you think you might sound you're when not. you're actually up there singing, when you listen to it the next day and you've sobered you up a little kill bit, yourself. you're like, oh my god, that was that really me? I was. It was so bad that I it made me uncomfortable, and I was alone in the room listening to it, and I felt cr- like I cringed. Cringe. <laughs> You're like, wow, is that really me? And you. Oh god. <laughs> you know, it's so weird though. Do you ever notice that though? Like you ever you ever hear yourself like remember like back in the day when you had like an answering machine and you had to make the message for your answering machine? You like talking to it with a tape, you know, like a cassette. Mm-hmm. And then like if you were to call into the machines, you'd actually hear you could hear your own voice. I'm like, that's really me? Like I don't sound the same. Like, I don't know what you guys are hearing right now on the podcast, but, like, it, it's probably not what I really sound like. It's weird. Like, my recorded <laughs> voice is very different than – so, yeah, you're right. A few times I've heard, like 
And then, like, you're up there singing, you know, like, oh, man, I'm killing this. I sound really good. And, yep. and man, this is a great well, song. This is a great song for me. I'm going to sing this again the next time we do karaoke. And then, like, I'll hear you record it. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm like this, no, this, don't even play it. This is really cute, though. Whose is that? Hold on. Who's that? It's me. Oh, that's you when you're a little kid. Uh, I am so fucking cute. You were actually in tune. I was. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> right? <laughs> What happened? You used to be able to you know like. Know what it is? I can sing in tune. I just don't have a pleasant voice. No, that's you do. I, that's not true. Actually, you you sing pretty well, really. But oh. it's just like sometimes, you know, everybody has stuff they can sing and stuff that you can't. So when you're covering other people's music, especially karaoke, you're always singing someone else's song. But you, what you have to remember is that professional singers, they write songs and record them in a key that's made just for their voice. Yeah, like, like Stevie like, Wonder's really hard to sing. Yeah. I cannot sing James Taylor. It's no, but like, the, the, well, well, you you just first of all put out like two male vocalist right so like you know that's that's the first thing like they sing in different keys then mm. so that's wow. the funny thing like you know you have to find artists and songs that you could sing what is that <laughs> all right you had a little book <laughs> yeah that's a funky note Oh, it's funny. Oh, I'm so fucking cute. You were very cute. You were a cute little kid. You were. I want to. I want to hug me. Ah. Uh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think you actually sang way better then than you do now. I <laughs> just. I'm so fucking cute. I sort of got it. You are very, you are a very cute kid. You are. You That's are. Stuff. Well, where I was going with this, with looking at my phone and and titling everything, so I know what I have in here. I already had some things titled, and so I just wanted to read to you what's in my phone. Um, <laughs> boring fart medley, five farts, uh, <laughs> fart medley, short fart, pulsating farts, four part fart. Long fart, <laughs> farts, good fart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, in case you want to listen to a fart, you just let me know what kind you want to listen to. And, you know, and I've got a variety to Now, where from. do these all come from? Your ass. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait a second. Hold on. Those are all of me. <laughs> all of them. Oh, my God. Yeah, all that's of them. pretty scary, actually. Yeah. All of them. Yeah, that's they're, they're scary. There's actually compilations in there. Yes, well, because if you recall, we used to record them on your phone, and then we had a bunch of them, and then we would take my phone and record your phone. But like we, I'd hit pause. In just, just in each. case, people, you ever wonder what we do in our free time? <laughs> this is what we do. We're fun. Two idiots. Yeah, two fucking idiots. <laughs> That's really funny, god. man. Oh my god. Yeah. They actually re- are very funny to listen to, though. Like I think so, but I so, mean, you want me to share? No, I don't. I don't think you should. Share. <laughs> <laughs> you played cousin Matt's fart last year. Who's cousin Matt? Oh, cousin Matt's you fart. You played his fart that he yeah. sent you. Yeah, cousin Matt's fart was pretty. Actually, they're all pretty crazy. They're so He's fucking got some long. squeaky. Like I don't know. He must have like the tightest ass like out of any human being in the world. He's got like, control. He's got. Vocal control yeah. of his asshole. Yeah. He can like yes. pinch it in such a way that the fart is long yeah. and he can, steady. He can actually like make notes with that yeah. thing. I don't and know. We... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it keeps what. Going and I don't going. know what kind of sphincter control he has going on down there, but it's yeah. like pretty. He puts you to shame. He d- he really does. He does. He really does. You know, for all like I've always thought. I mean, like, you know, around my friends as a kid or whatever, like, you know, you're jerking around doing stupid stuff. I always thought, like, you know, like, I, I was definitely the master of all that stuff. Yeah. But then then Cousin Matt just totally yeah. showed me up. Yeah, he totally did. I was like, wow, you just you just schooled me, man. I, I had no idea. We need that- to bring masks, 
to the family reunion. Yeah. Um, so as to not like get sick from the stench and have, I know that there's going to be some kind of farting contest going on that we're going to have to record. There usually is. Yeah. 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 Among so. like other, uh, family fun games that go along, <laughs> like most other normal families do, <laughs> you know, like some badminton or like volleyball in yeah. the backyard, maybe some pool games, you know, like whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course, pepper in the old, uh, you know, fart yeah. contest. And then, then you guys can't forget the pool. The old bubbles in the pool. Oh, right. Comparing yeah. bubbles. <laughs> Gotta love that. It's the bubble contest. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. So um, we have a few more things coming up that we're going to get to today. We're going to take uh, some phone calls again from the listeners, if anybody calls. I put a little post out there on Facebook letting people know that we were going to be taking calls shortly. And if Can you... I just say something? This damn cat did this to me again. Did he? he did it again. I don't know what the hell is up with this cat. We have this cat, Curly. He's like the one, he's the only one that we have that actually has any fur. And uh, the other ones are sphinxes. They're bald cats. This cat, for some reason, he's like, you know, he's a big, he's like kind of, he looks like a, like a marshmallow, right? He looks like, like the Stay Puff marshmallow guy. He's got like little skinny shoulders and like a big fat body. He kind of looks like an egg and he's white. He's, <laughs> he's all white, right? He's like a big fat he's cat. He's got wavy fur though. That's, he's a Devon Rex. Yeah, he's a big fat cat, but he's, he's like the best cat. So er, I mean, I've caught him so many times. He's kind of like lazy. He likes to sit on things. Like he likes to like rest his butt on things. Oh, no, somebody's here with a pizza. With a, and we didn't order pizza. With a pizza? Hi. What you got there? We didn't order pizza. What's on it? No. Nah. <laughs> Sorry. Peppers and onions. <laughs> See, now I want to open the door, but then uh, that could have been a setup. People don't open the door to strangers. No, when a kid shows up on your front porch with a pizza that you didn't o- order, mm-hmm. that's a good time to uh, get the Glock out. Yes. Yeah, because that's like actually what they do. They yes. actually like will roll up and like ring your doorbell and like yep. see if anybody's home. And then if it's like an old lady that answers the door or some shit, they'll like yep. force their way in, and duct tape you, and then it's on. You yeah. So. Yeah, actually. Good thing I'm dressed. Good thing you're dressed. <laughs> well, you know, because we got that glass insert in the door. That was really weird, right? Yeah. And somebody's not getting a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> that blows. <laughs> pizza? Actually, I could go for a pizza. Go, go get that kid. Get Tell him to come back. <laughs> I was that's why I asked him what's on it. So let me get back to my cat story here. So uh, Curly, he likes to sit on stuff. And for some reason, he likes to sit on like like a coffee cup. is like the perfect height. Yes. It's like, like a bench seat height for a cat. Yes. So this fucker... <laughs> He will sit (laughs) on my coffee cup. Now, you got to picture this, right? The cat sits down, and so a cat, you know, of course, has his tail on the back. He sits to where his ass is on the rim of the cup. His asshole. His tail is up in the (laughs) air, and his legs are, like, the rest of him is in front of the cup. So, basically, the rim of the cup is on, like, his asshole, right? (laughs) (laughs) And I caught him a few times sitting on my coffee cup like that. And I'm like, really, dude? Really? Like, like you had to, like, put your ass on, on like, right on, like, right on the rim. Like, like, it, like yeah. that's the only place you could find to sit in this whole house yeah. is on my coffee cup. And if I hadn't have seen that, like, he might have got up 10 seconds earlier, and I would have picked up that coffee and been drinking it all morning like nothing ever happened. Yep. So he just did it to me again. Yeah. With this cup right here on the table. Yeah. Oh, his bitch. asshole is clean. I, yeah, I don't care. <laughs> he cleans how, himself. I don't care how clean there's it no, is. I don't no, want it on no my cup. Chips on it. Yeah. No. Aww, Damn sorry it. Sorry about that. I'll got pour me. Got me again. Yeah, it's okay. It's family. Yeah. No, that's all right. <laughs> I'll do with that one though. Uh, so I had some thoughts going on in my head, um, and I didn't. I didn't do a uh, random thought in the phone. Because I was in the car and my Bluetooth was on. And also, so when I'm in the car and I go to record something sometimes, it, the, my, I got a problem with my phone with the voice record sometimes. It, 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 it doesn't catch it all. It doesn't type it. You know, like I'm talking about the Siri thing. Right. 
So anyway, so I just wrote it down. This was a thought that went. Through I think my head. Siri's a little dyslexic or something. I don't. She... Siri's a total douche. <laughs> yeah, she, I call her that all the time, and yeah. she's like, she'll be like, "That's not something. very nice." Let me see something. <laughs> call her a douche. Siri, why are you a douche? <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> Siri, how come you're so fucking stupid? Now, now. <laughs> right, that, is that all you can come up with? That's it? That's all you got? Fucking bitch. <clears throat> so, this was my random thought. And it's a genuine thought. It's, it's, I'm not trying to be shallow or, or funny or anything. This was, a, this was a genuine, it's like a sociological question. Okay? They're just random thoughts that go through my head. Alice's brain is working overtime Could be while she's driving or standing in line So what is she thinking? What goes through her thoughts? Is it something profound or fucking just pissed her off? Get ready for random thoughts Get ready for random thoughts Do unattractive now it's you know beauty's in the eye of the beholder of course but i think we all know you know there's like levels of beauty as you know known in society you know some people who are just considered everybody thinks they're beautiful and some people everybody looks at and was like mm. like the, the couple once sat next to us at breakfast so do unattractive people get attracted to equally unattractive people because they know it's a match or because they are attracted to the unattractive person. I, or I, are like if if you're unattractive, physically unattractive, are you attracted to the same attractive people that everybody's attracted to? I think but so. you just don't pursue them because you know that you don't have a chance in the world? Uh I think so. I think, like, you know, it's as far as, you know, people seem to be attracted to what they're attracted to, so right? Does so does that mean, if to, now, now take into consideration that answer, and does that mean that then all unattractive people who have unattractive partners, that they are not attracted to the people that they're in a relationship with? You know what I mean? That's a totally different, like, we're attracted to each other, you and I. And if we were both, like, pretty fucking ugly and we were together because we couldn't get anybody better and, you know, like, and we're kind of, like, equal in unattractiveness, that's a whole other level of relationship if you're, like, in a relationship with somebody who you're completely not attracted to. Um, how, how, do you, how are you thinking of all this stuff? This I don't is, know. This is your random thought? Yes. That's why it's a random thought. Well, you know, like, beauty is in the eye of the beholder and, you know, all of that stuff. And, like, people like what they like. And, you know, like, sometimes you see the most, like, the oddest couples, like, pairing. True. Like, it just That's don't, what made me think of it, Just don't think. make any sense at all, like, yes, to yes, us. Yes. But maybe to them, they work out perfectly. You know what so made me think of it, I think? It's not we, always about what you look like, though, either, right? We were watching the American Ninja Warrior. Sometimes you just have a monster dick. And, like, that, you know. That sometimes could, that's That the could reason. be enough. <laughs> But remember, we were watching American Ninja Warrior, and it was that that athlete guy, and he was like fucking perfect. He was, he was like had like a perfect body. He was a great looking guy. He was up, he was doing the thing. He was athletic. Right. He looked great. Right. And then they were panned to his girlfriend. And it's like, what the fuck, dude? Why? You never know. She like, could be like a high school sweetheart, she, his first love. Maybe right, like you know, they right. just have a great connection, and you know. Right. And maybe he's but that's got a, why the a dimmer in switch in the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thought that comes in my head. Like, okay, so it, I don't get it, though. You know what I mean? Because is, that's a huge element of a an intimate relationship is being yeah, attracted the, physically to the person that you're right, with. Right, but some people, like, what they think is attractive maybe aren't isn't what everyone else thinks is attractive. They have, like, that, you know, non-conforming uh, whatever. Like, so, like, you see some, like really um good looking or very uh fit guys are with you know someone who's very unfit and very you know totally opposite what you would think they might be with and they have a great relationship so okay but that's also maybe then and, it, and it, that's and what the guy likes like i've heard some guys like little like really skinny guys like really really 
Like, Love big, big, fat, fat, fat like chicks. Big, 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 big. Yeah, but like, that's also like a psychological big. thing too. So with, with a lot, there's a whole thing behind that as well because of their insecurity. Yeah, well, I don't, I don't, I don't pretend to know anything about any of that. I'm just saying, like, trying. Well, that's to, what I'm trying to investigate here. So now, yeah, I, I don't, I don't have the an answer for you. I think that gets. Well, that's what I'm like, trying. Well, let's dig into this a little, just a little bit here. So, if you're an un. This sounds like a shallow how movie. I know. Well, right? I, I know. I know it sounds, but I mean, it's like let's not pretend that everybody is equally attractive, physically attractive. I mean, I mean, there's people who are in great physical shape who have beautiful faces, and then there's people who are in great physical shape and have we, the butter face contest we listened to on Stern. Oh, that was really day, funny, right? <laughs> and like you know, they have a great body and a butter face, right. and so I think that got me thinking about it. The too. The funny That's why thing about just, the butter face contest on Howard Stern is that the girls who enter in the contest, like they, they're told what the contest is about. Yeah, they know, and like they, like they know. So like they, they most enter of the, themselves. Most in. of them enter themselves into it, you know, thinking yeah. they're going to win the twenty five thousand dollars, whatever. And they always ask them, like the whole panel of judges, you know, they're all up there on the table, Robin. Uh, they have to get Howard, first. They get they have a know. bag on their head and they get rated on their body. Right. On um, one to ten, ten being the a hot body. Right. And then they take the bag off, and that's when you hear all the oh my god. And then on one to ten, they get rated on and the, a ten. Now is the height of ugliness. Right. So the closer to ten like they really get, they're really fucking face, ugly. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So if you get a 10 and a 10, you have like a super hot body but a super busted face. Right, right. right. So, I mean, like everybody knows pretty much where they are <laughs> in the range of 1 to 10 of, you know, good looking. That's funny. Dude. So are, are, if, if there are people who are like in the 3 range of good looking with another 3, right? are they feeling like do they have a different standard of beauty because they're like is it genetically made like because you'd think that everybody would be attracted to like who ever like 95 percent of the population thinks is is good looking you know what i mean like just pick anybody you know like that everybody christy brinkley who's who thinks that she's not good looking right like probably everybody would say that she's a great looking woman she always has been and even in her 60s she's fucking amazing so would Somebody that's all those face cream she's advertising. <laughs> well, you know, it, whatever she's doing, it's working. But the, so where I'm going is, are people who are like a three and are with a three, are they not really happy with the attractiveness of the person they're with? Because if they think Christy Brinkley's hot and then they're with a three, they've got to be thinking that they're partner. so. In other words, they have an understanding of what like the ten is, right? And realize that they're with a three, or they think that. Or is their standards lower? Like they think that that this three I, is really attractive. I don't know. Or because why? Because if in your if you're blind or if you suddenly became blind, you know what I mean? Like I never really put any thought into that. Yeah. Like <laughs> are they like yeah? Know. I'd really rather be with Christy Brinkley, but look at me. I can't get that, so I'm going to be with the three and be happy with what I got. But are you finding that three attractive now? Like is there a, like is there something in your mind that now makes you find that physically attractive? I think three? that once you, once you re- make the right connection with somebody, like you, they become attractive to you because you. That I agree with that. Yeah. But a huge part of even finding a person is always that you know that look. Like when you know you look at somebody like oh my god you know like holy shit and you're attracted to the person and you have mm. like all kinds of crazy sex in the beginning of the relationship <laughs> because you're, why is it you know, only the beginning? It's, it still goes on for us. That's I'm, what I'm, I'm saying. Just saying it you know, in general. Only be the beginning. I know. I'm just saying, like you know, how it is in the beginning of a relationship, like when you're all hot and bothered all the time, you know, because you're so like right. attracted. So, I just, there, I don't even know if there's a study about this. I, <laughs> there must be. There's a study about some, everything. Somewhere there's a study. Someone did some, like you know, some field survey or something over the course of two years with like you know 200 participants right. and whatever so the, now, it, mu- it must why, exist out there somewhere i can understand why I, I think i can understand more why a highly attractive person might be with an unattractive person because they're obviously finding some qualities of that person attractive maybe or like their personality just is so so good that it overcomes right. any physical unattractiveness yeah but there's just when you think about the population of threes as a whole, mm. what is their mindset? Are they with another three or two or one because they can't get better or because that's what they're really attracted to and something in their brain makes them attracted to what 
is normally considered less attractive. I don't know, but my brain settling? is starting to hurt thinking about all of this. I so need it's to like, know. It's like, like, yeah. The, I want people to yeah. tell me. Okay, so you, if you're... You need to do some research. If you're but, ugly but and you're listening You're not going to get the answer from me because <laughs> I... right now. I don't know. <laughs> um, what is funny, though, is that, like, I have... I recall on a number of occasions, like, seeing some very attractive people, men or, or women, either way, <laughs> uh, and then thinking they are very not... Uh, appealing, um, you know, for whatever reason, because they were just a douche or they, whatever it could, oh, yeah. could be. And then on the other side of that, I've been around other people that, you know, friends with or whatever it might be and thinking like, wow, this person was really like a, an awesome personality. And like, like you're just attracted to their, like they have a magnetic Aura. personality. Like they yeah. draw you in, but yeah. like on, on the surface. Like with me. No, not like, no, no, <laughs> not, not with you. <laughs> No, oh, nice try this. Yeah, uh, on the surface, you know, it, it's like you know maybe not so much going on, but like they have a magnetic personality. Right. So I would I imagine, think, but that's the exception. Yeah, I would imagine when two of those people get together, right? Like it, it really, you know, there's there's chemistry there, right? right? I mean, like there's some Hollywood couples, and I fucking hate when I see this on these fucking like gossip websites at the bottom of the screen, you know, like um, gorgeous people with their ugly spouses, you know. Yeah, that's I not cool. I hate that that's shit. That's not cool. Like, yeah. That, I hate that yeah, shit. Yeah, but that's always like tabloids doing like, you know, saying nasty yeah. stuff and like, you know, bashing people. and Yeah, I'm like, I'm not looking to exploit them and like, look at these, look at what the fuck's he doing with her. I'm not looking to do that right now. I'm actually thinking about like the whole psychology of it, of, of if everybody, if everybody finds this one person attractive or this type of look attractive and you're incapable of ever attaining that relationship with a person who looks like that, how are you feeling about the person that you're with who is nowhere near the level of attractiveness that you're attracted to? Okay, got one. I got one on the same level. as I was thinking about this the other day. I was thinking about like when you get older and you're like an old person, right? Mm -hmm. like old person, right? And you're, all, you're young in your mind. Yeah. So like your dad. When he was in the hospital yeah, with the nurse. My, yeah, my dad said that to me. My dad said, like, you know, when he was, like, um, you know, like, really on his last legs and stuff, and he had all kinds of problems toward the end there, and he was basically hospitalized. And so he had nurses and stuff. That, you know, he was, he was married, of course, and had a great wife he loved very much, attractive wife, and she would kid around with him about it because, you know, he was, he was an old guy by that time. And these young nurses would come in and, like, you know, bathe them or whatever. And she would even kid around with them. And he's like, you know, well, in my mind, I'm still, like, you still think like, like a young person. You still are attracted to a young woman. But, like, you realize you're in this old body. Like, this, you know, you're not young yeah. anymore. Yeah. And so my question is, like, what do you think that, like, um, I don't know, it was weird. I, had, I was thinking about this the other day. Like, as you get older and you see women, let's say that, like, you were maybe once attracted to, let's say you saw someone that, like, you were in college with or whatever that was, like, super hot and you were, like, super attracted to them. And now, like, you're, like, 50 years older and you see that person. Are you still, like, in other words, like, are they still, you know what I mean? Like, are you yeah. still attracted? Like, they're still an attractive person, but or is your mind, like... You're not looking at like an older person. You know what I mean? It's like it's a strange, yes. it's a really strange. Well, some people, though, that are good looking when they're younger, like you, and stay good looking when they're older. And then you got the people oh, who are like younger now. and they were good looking in high school. And, the, you know, then they were like, what the fuck happened? Holy shit. Just hit the wall. That's like when we've talked about that many times before on this podcast. Like, the, you know what? And I just I, I, I revel in it, though, when these fucking nasty, mean high school dickheads who are so fucking popular and treat you like shit, and then they graduate and they're fucking nobodies, and they turn into bald and fat, and they, their outsides match their insides, you know? Right, right. And I told you that I even I dated down this one chick once, and she was hideous looking. I mean, she was really... I, 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 I'm almost on the borderline of the word repulsive. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, was not my idea of anything I found attractive, and the way that we had met was through mutual friends. And so we used to hang out all the time, the group of four of us. And that's how I met this person. So we were all friends. Didn't think anything of it. And this chick who, who was the other person that I had ended up dating, she was loaded. And um, she took us all to Puerto Rico once. So, and she like, and she paid for it. The flights, 
the everything, the hotel. She just wanted all the young, pretty girls to hang out with her. <laughs> well, no, she because she had so much fucking money. She's like, she wants to go on a Puerto Rico vacation and go with her friends, but you know, like, and if her friends can't afford it, she's like, well, then I'm gonna pay for it. You know what I mean? She was like. She was like that. She was very yeah. generous. Yeah. Very generous with her friends. Very fucking generous. Very nice. And so she took us all so we can all enjoy a vacation together. So um, my, my other my, – the other couple, uh, Gloria and Lucy, they shared a ro- their room together. And then the one I was with, we had a room together. Now, at this point, we're just friends still. We've never done anything. We've never dated. We never kissed. Nothing. But we're sharing the room because the other two had a room. So, I mean, like, I'm not going to get my own room. You know, like it's – ridiculous of course we can share a room right and it was on that trip though that it's kind of like you know sometimes you just like let down your guard all right all right you can eat me you know like oh God. <laughs> okay <laughs> all right all right all right whatever you yeah. have to yeah all right, so, I'll, I'll just lay that, back and yeah. uh yeah all so right. meanwhile she had been attracted to me um and and she was like she was interested in having a relationship with me i wasn't interested back all along and I wasn't even interested, even like during that trip. I was like putting out, but just because you know it was like it was in the dark, and it, you know I was on a trip, and it was fun. And you were so, single. And I was single. So, um, but then I ended up dating her, despite the fact that she was unattractive, because I think I was so used to her already as a friend. I like I didn't, I didn't really. Um, I was able to. Look yeah, I think past we've, we've it. probably all had like friends that maybe like turned into something oddly and kind of weirdly and like who knows and like just like like what's what's happening with this friendship and you're not really physically compatible but maybe like you were both single at one time and like something happened and you know like the, those things have probably happened and turned into a friend with benefits and then you're like right. uh no <laughs> no well you know what happened then. and all of a sudden the benefits become the uh the well, problems yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah or yeah exactly and th- this person actually i ended up um she ended up being ugly on the inside as well and, uh, and then once I that hate, happened I hate, I, was, when, I hate it when people are ugly on the inside oh yeah yeah i can deal with the ugliness on the outside but don't be ugly on the inside <laughs> yeah because then i so, gotta kick you right yeah, in the ass. yeah exactly because now that you're ugly on the inside there's no fucking reason to stay with the ugly on the outside too fuck you right you know like uh-huh. It's like, yeah, it's like if you were really hot on the outside and you were kind of ugly on the inside, we might be might, able yeah. to, like, it might be some sort of, like, trade-off <laughs> ratio there. Out, I'm not on. quite sure what the ratio is acceptable point or sex, not. Sex, right, but it's like when it's busted on the outside and then, like, nasty on the inside, it's yeah. all like, like what, what am I doing? Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. Yeah. Yep. No. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Stop it. <laughs> no. I'll never forget... <laughs> It's like you're talking to the dog. No. No. <laughs> no. Stop it. No. I will never forget when I had an epiphany in that relationship too because she – for a while she was like treating me badly because she was like – she had a drinking problem and she would just like turn into a dick. And I remember I was upset. Did she actually turn into a dick? <laughs> no. Um, but I, I don't even remember what the argument was over. We were, I was upset about something and I was crying. Was there balls and everything? Just... No, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I was upset about something. We were in an argument about something and she was a complete, like she was being an asshole and I was upset and crying and she started to mimic me crying. Oh, see, now that's a douche move. And when you know, when you're with someone and they get upset and you're like, woohoo, woo, what are you crying about? Uh-huh. Like that's just like that. That's like you know a, a, a nut punch worthy type yes. of gesture. And yeah. all of a sudden, when she started doing that, something in my head went snap, and then I was like, fuck you! It like yeah. occurred to me, like, what am I crying over this person for? Like, look at look at her. And she's going to act like that? Like, what am I doing? Yeah, what were you doing? I don't know. That's when it hit me. Like, what the fuck am I crying about? Did you so, ever just, like, wake up one day and be like, just like, what am I doing? Yes. That was the moment. <laughs> you've when had, I, when you've I, had those relationships in the past where you yes. just, like, you rolled over and you're like, oh, 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 yes. whoa, 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 whoa. Yes. Oh, shit. <laughs> Yes. What am I doing? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I hate it when up, that happens. Yeah, and then you got divorced. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 
Thank you. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. God, is she fucked uh, up. You got to love exes, man. No. She... All right. So let, let's get on a better topic. Because okay. Because this so... is going down a, a weird road. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, we, took a, we took a turn, like, where there are no more streetlights and stuff. I'm not, I'm not really sure how we missed the, the sign, but okay. let's try to get back on the highway. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Know, I can't... We're somewhere off, like, that, that movie Wrong Turn. We, yeah. like, down in, like, West Virginia, and, like, you went through, like, the hillbilly camp and, like, the... Yeah, they shot out your tires and hacked up your friends and shit. Yeah. Yeah, we're somewhere down near that lake. Yeah. 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 Let's, let's get out of let's that campsite. Of okay. Yeah. All right. I'll find something else. Um, we have some questions that we didn't answer. Ooh, so questions. let me look here. And then we're going to take some calls. We are. Yeah, we'll take some calls. But I want to hit these ones that we missed. When helping people with their homes, they call Skip Bedell. If you want to avoid a headache and save money, he's the man to talk to. Skip Bedell. <laughs> Jeff Winchester asked, does each state require a contractor to obtain a license? I asked because in Indiana where I live, I needed, I needed, needed work done on my roof as well as ceiling work done. Everything was fine when they came by. I asked if they were licensed and insured and, they, and if they have a license to do the work. They never called me back. Just curious if that's something that is rare or if you do not have a light to, if you don't have to obtain a license to do the work. All right. Well, my answer to that is that, oddly enough, much to my surprise, there are some states uh, in our great country that do not require... Or even jurisdictions within states, like like Orange County in New York, does not require a license to do home improvement, but yet every other jurisdiction in New York does. Correct. Right. So, there, yeah. So, within the state, they may be separated down to counties or actually cities, or townships. sometimes even incorporated villages. It could right. be you know separated all the way down to that. So uh, depending upon where you live and what the rulings are. So, uh, yeah, there are some places that do not require any license at all to do any residential contracting or remodeling of any type, which to me is just like the Wild West. That's, that's pretty scary. It pretty much means if you've yeah. got a pickup truck and a hammer, you know, you're a contractor. So yeah. uh, if you are unfortunate enough to live in that state or in that city, uh, I would say that you should probably do extra due diligence extra. and you know get a long list of referrals and a you know, long track record. Uh, speak to twenty of their prior customers and you know do everything times two that yes. you would normally have to do because you know one of the great things about uh, having a license as a contractor is that you have to go through all the testing, you have to go through all the criteria background checks, all the things that have to happen in order to get that license. And that still doesn't even mean that you're good. That, that doesn't necessarily mean that you really know what the hell you're or doing. Ethical. It just yeah, it doesn't mean that you're an ethical person. It just means that you have gone through all the paces and that you're in the system and that you know you there, you are accountable for. So you are answering to someone, you're trying, you know, you're being above board and you're you're subjecting yourself to inspections and someone looking at your work. So and you can be fine. Usually people who are really shady don't want to deal with that right so you right. know um because those so, things cost money yeah absolutely of course it costs money to be a professional you got to have a business you know a, a corporation you got to have a business account you, you got to pay a, to be licensed a you place, gotta place to do insurance. your a place to do your business you got to pay to have your license to take the test you got to have liability insurance and comp and all the other things that cost money to be in business so if a guy can just go out and get a business card made for 10 bucks for a thousand cards and <laughs> Slap a magnetic, yeah. Slap a magnetic sign on the on the back of his uh, pickup truck, roll down the road with a couple of tools, and now he's a contractor. If that's the case, then I would say that you know it's um, again follow those instructions. So but hope, let me hopefully, chime in. you can really go on to. Ah! Oh, well, this you, is where I chime in. Oh, because you're the investigator, right? And, yeah. Well, actually, so, that was your whole part on our show, right? Yeah. Finding out people. Yeah. So yeah. So what you go can ahead, do? Fill them in. Every jurisdiction that does require the contractors to have a license has the information on a website on their jurisdiction website. So if you live in a county, look at the county's website. Look under Consumer Affairs is where they'll usually have it if they have a Consumer Affairs department. And look on their website to find the licensure. You can find if they if they even require to have a license, they'll tell you on the website. And if they are required, you can look them up by their name or their business name. And if you're unable to find them on the website, you can even call sometimes – because sometimes you might be getting your name spelled wrong or you might be getting the business. You know, sometimes it's listed under one or the other. But once you verify with that jurisdiction that does require a license, that the person you're looking into does not have a license, 
that's a person to avoid. That means obviously. move on and take the uh, the next appointment with someone <laughs> right. else. Yeah, right. But you, you can, can check out, out for something called looking. CSLB, which is the state licensing a contract of state licensing board. Most states have, or you can check with your local consumer affairs department of consumer affairs office, which is also usually the other licensing body that will issue the tests and you know when to monitor all of the uh, the actions of the contractors. So, um, and there's the answer to your question. And there you You're go. You're welcome. This is a question that I found um, a little interesting. I don't know if it's telling about the person who wrote it. Nick Rubin asked, here's a question. You have a married woman in California, and she's leaving her husband. And her husband found a place to move out too. And he's taking all the belongings when they are hers. Who's got the right? First of all, not sure. I don't know divorce law or property law in California. Yeah, I, I read that question uh, a few days ago when he asked it, and I'm like, hmm, I, yeah, I can't help you that, with that no, one. That's, if you're asking... Uh, question of law, I couldn't tell you because, I mean, like, that that's, that's pretty involved. But morally, we can answer that question. Um, well, and also, just having gone through a divorce myself and having been having lived in a house with somebody, it's kind of like a race to get what you can before the court gets to you. If you're like rich people, like rich famous people, and it's like uh, you know expensive stuff you took, then you're probably going to have to deal with the court and give something back. Like if you took like art worth a million dollars, but if it's like stuff that is you know the silverware or you know like a, a, a trinket of some sort, or you took all of the the furniture, you know like that nobody you know that kind of shit. Right. It's who can get it out first because I made the mistake when I moved out of my house from my ex of not taking things, one, because even though some of it was mine, um, the douchebag that I was married to was just like, you know, no, we're going to let the judge decide. They're going to let the judge decide. I was just like mentally exhausted. I was like, I didn't care. Like it's, I, at some point I was like, I'm just, I just, I'm not, I got to get out of here. You know, got to be with some, Skip. Sometimes it's just like <laughs> better to just like, like leave your shit that you really don't need because – 90% of the stuff that you have in your life is pretty much just uh, clutter that you really probably don't need. And you're right. probably just going to need to get a storage box get and pay, pay a monthly storage fee to put. Right. Um, so yeah. <laughs> sometimes you're better off to just leave it yeah. and get and some know, new shit. Yeah, I tried to take some of my shit and I was just getting the third degree every time I was trying to leave the house. I, and because I waited too long to do it, I should have done it much sooner. And then they were like these Fucking steak knives! Like uh, to this day, I'm still annoyed about the steak. It's knives always though. the little stuff. Yeah, it's always like yeah. the little. Well, it's not right? even just like, because of their knives. My dad had bought me a box of eight steak knives, the same ones that they um, use in Outback Steakhouse. Oh, the wood handles, right? Yes, those are nice steak knives. Yes, my, we have them. Yes, my dad bought me. A, but I think ours are the ones you took from Outback Steakhouse. Yes. <laughs> now let me rewind. Let me rewind. That's why we only have three. Yeah. Let me rewind. My dad bought me a box of them. He purchased them for me, oh. and I would never opened them when I lived in my condo until I moved in with my ex, and then opened the box. So I and they put them in the I put them in the drawer. Now she already had some too that she had stolen from Outback. So they're in the drawer with all the all. But I knew which was which because the ones that I got from my dad had like a newer handle shinier handle not one that had been you know used by a thousand different people so when i was clearing out my shit that i brought into the house and she would not let me she was like no those are mine i took those from outback you know those are mine so she would not let me take my knives and i, I took knew those from outback yeah. that's great yeah no i stole those yes exactly Exactly, right? That's really So meanwhile, funny. <laughs> I knew without an element of doubt that those were my steak knives because dad gave them to me. Right. But I couldn't get them out because she wouldn't let me, like, you know what I mean? She was, like, physically preventing me from taking my knives. So I couldn't take them. And then, now, fast forward about uh, six months later, I think, at the time, like, I wasn't talking to Dad. And then we were talking again. Right. And he came over, and we were doing dinner one night, and he was asking about, well, what about the knives I gave you? And that's when I was like, son of a bitch. I could see, like, I was, I, he gave me those fucking knives. He even remembered that years before he gave me those knives. They were my fucking knives and they were in that douchebag's house because she wouldn't let me take my fucking knives. Well, there but, you go. Yeah. So thing is, if you're going to be like leaving somebody who's treating you like shit. Take your steak knives. Take your shit quick. Because and then you know then you got these assholes like no the judge is going to decide and I was like no you asshole the judge isn't going to decide who gets what silverware they don't decide that when you're in court you moron 
so fucking stupid. That's the stupidity I had to deal with. I wish I would have, because I'd never gone through it before. I, if I knew better, I would have taken what I really wanted, what was mine, quickly, and when she was not home, <laughs> get it out of the house when they're not home, Get take what's yours, get it out. Um, it sounds like maybe your ex took, um, what's that, and husband found a place, with, and he's taking, oh, he's taking all the belongings that when they are hers. It depends. If you bought them. After you got married, they're yeah, married property. Yeah, like, the whole thing is like a – that's a really sticky situation. Very sticky. It's hard to answer that question and give yeah. you any proper advice. I and mean, it sounds like you probably need to get an attorney and like hash that stuff out. Yeah, and, and a lot the of judge times, is not going to decide. Yeah, a lot of times stuff like that just goes to like mediation. Yeah. You know, and, and, you sit, and you sit down and you just like you – know, just hash it out. It sucks, but like that's what you got to do, you know, or, moral, or, else, or else just walk away from it. Yeah, because so, That's why I said right, sometimes it's easy just to walk away and not even have to stand there and like bicker over it, right? Yeah. There's the moral right to take something and a legal right. And legal right almost doesn't count because the judge will not address those fucking things. Mm. They just don't deal with that shit in court. What else you got? There's somebody who had asked about sushi. Somebody's asking who doesn't like sushi, but they want a suggestion of what to try as a new sushi person I, yeah that's like um t- that's a tough question because like you know it depends on what you like you know but i mean right but if they, you don't think, know what you like yeah there's actually some safer things because not all sushi is like and everything out of sushi bar is considered like raw fish there are some yes. things that are cooked i will make a suggestion not that i'm a sushi expert but i will tell you when i first started eating sushi probably back in like the i don't know i want to say 80s Ooh. um I was like, I thought the same thing that most people have never eaten. All you think of is like a slice of yes. raw fish. So they just got yeah. cut off the yeah. fish and they like slapped it on your table. So it's like that's definitely not the case. And, you know, I went with some friends of mine. We're actually at like, I think it was like a ski lodge. And uh, there was a sushi restaurant like in the, in, the, in the lodge. So we went in there and like at that particular day, I think it was the only restaurant that was open in this ski place. And we were all starving. So I'm like, I don't want to eat that. And they had a whole assortment of different things. And it was like, here, try this. You know, and I found that if you put enough soy sauce and wasabi pretty much on anything, you can, <laughs> I mean, you could pretty much like dunk like, you know, like a turd in like a bowl of wasabi and soy sauce. Yeah. And it would probably taste pretty good. Yeah. I th- you, you need to start off small, like with a boring roll that doesn't have a lot of stuff in it and then work your way up because you, then you can really get the flavor of what type of fish is in that roll. Cause a roll is usually just rice Seaweed paper and a f- and one fish or maybe a fish plus a piece of avocado in yeah, it. Yeah, but now they make them with everything. They put right. steak in I'm them saying, and lobster and like you know everything, right? Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I said work your way up so you know which fish you like and which one you don't like. So you don't get this big expensive roll full of stuff mm. and you don't even know if you like it or not. So try things one at a time. I also suggest getting something with soy paper instead of seaweed paper. Because the seaweed paper has a little bit of a taste to it that might change the flavor of what you're actually eating. The well, it's a little bit fishy. It's a little bit fishy. It's a little bit like because it's from the right. sea. You're right, <laughs> so. it's seaweed. And it, you know, it's 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 just something that's a little can bit low add. tide tasting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It is, and it's an almost an acquired taste. Yeah. So if you're going to get a roll, try to ask for it to be made with soy paper, or um, they have other kinds of paper. Just get like you know, like the most basic thing that I think everybody has tried for the first time is a California roll, and it's like I don't get, like that now. See. Really? Yeah. But like, you don't like it now, but like it's probably I never e- liked it. It's probably the easiest thing to eat, and it's not it's fi- the fake crab. It's, it's not and it's got fishy. Cucumber. It's got like some cucumber and like a little like a crab leg, you know, like the. Um, Fake crab. Yeah. See, yeah. Like, like you get like a seafood salad type of thing and some yeah. rice and it's like pretty basic, right? Yeah. So yeah. A little but cucumber. But salmon sushi is fucking delicious and um, so is tuna. It depends if you like salmon. Does like it? Salmon to me Salmon is sushi of... does not taste like cooked salmon at all. They are two different, completely different. Right. I'll tell you what. I think this is the safest bet for you. Go out to dinner with other people that eat sushi regularly and you get the safe bet. Bet you get like the something from the hibachi something table. Cooked, yeah. yeah, usually like those restaurants have like a hibachi side, and they have yeah. like you know you can get some egg rolls and shit. Yeah. So go with like the safe bet. You know, get some uh, some beef dish or something like that, and then like sample a little bit of everybody else's stuff and see what you like. And then you, I mean, that's that's the way I did it. You know, and you kind of like, oh, I'll try that. That's not so bad. Right. And then you get you're a little braver, and you try the next piece, and next thing you know, you're just like gnawing on a raw fish. Yeah, you just right. like scales and all, right. the whole thing, the, fl- right. the, the flippers and the fins and everything, just sucking the eyeballs right out of that thing. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> flippers and all. Gross. <laughs> well, yeah, 
or eat, try everybody else's stuff. I like your flippers. Right. You like my snapper. Yeah, I do. <laughs> That's my favorite kind of sushi, snapper sushi. <laughs> You're the first person I've ever been with to call it a snapper. Clam sushi. Yeah. That's great. What else you got? Hold on. Stand by. I'm, 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 I just put it out there if anybody wants to call. Maybe they will. I don't know. Just putting it out there. Oh, I remember now. The last episode, um, I had answered a question for somebody about their dog who was just biting everything. To- they, and they have appropriate toys for the dog to bite. They... It's a, a lab, I think, puppy. It's just biting absolutely everything. And I just wanted to reiterate my answer because I had noticed that some pieces of it, uh, it didn't, it, you couldn't, I don't know. The recording, I guess, just got a little choppy right in that portion. So I just wanted to reiterate my answer just so it was clear. So I had asked Denise Herman, who is a dog trainer extraordinaire uh, in New York City, And I asked her the question because she's the professional. And she said to me, when you're having a problem like that, you need to serve the dog their meals inside of the Kong. Like it's, um, it's like a really hard chewy thing with a space to put food in it. She said, put wet and dry food inside of the Kong toy, put it in the freezer until it freezes and serve them their meal that way. Give them their meals from a frozen, the frozen meal inside of a Kong. And that way they will be chewing on it. It will take them a long time. It will teach them the appropriate thing to chew. It will keep them very busy, the whole business of trying to get the food out of there. That's what she said. That's what you need to do. Keep them busy. Keep them busy. And we have a call coming in, I think. Here it is. Who's calling? Oh, my God. You're never going to believe who it is. Who is it? Who's that? Happy birthday, Skip. It's Jim Tharp. Jim Tharp. What's Hi, going Jim. on there, Jim? Well, thank you, What's man. Up? It is my birthday. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. You're we, very welcome. It's nice to talk to you. Finally. I know. For the first time ever. I yeah. know, right? Yeah, you're always on Facebook. Always here? got some great stuff. Is always it, great comments and questions. He and said, stuff. is it hot here? It's fucking boiling here. <laughs> Oh no, my! It's 108 here. Oh, Whoa. okay. All, all right. right, all right. You got to win. <laughs> Is it humid? <laughs> no, you guys got that. Yeah, yeah. So it feels worse here. Yeah, it's pretty much like a swamp. Yeah, it's disgusting. It feels really gross, and there's a lot of mosquitoes along with it. It's really gross. Sounds like a great time. Why don't you come on out and visit? <laughs> <laughs> you sound exactly like I thought. I, I had envisioned his voice sounding like this. Well, you were right. No. Yes. Wow, you're just as ladylike as I thought. No, I'm just, kidding. Uh, just kidding. Just kidding. Wow. See what you get for calling in there, Jim? That'll teach you. Wow. I know, right? That's what I say every time she opens her mouth. Wow. Really? Exactly. Listen, man, I got to live with that. <laughs> uh, no. 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 <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> so you guys having a good time? Yeah, yes. Man. Yeah. We're just about to uh, run out to the Home Depot. We have to pick up some um, some paint, but we're still in the middle of recording an episode, and we were hoping that we might get some questions for one of us or both of us to answer. Yeah. Um, I just... Uh, you just wanted to say hi. I've been sitting for two years, but... Um, <laughs> and it's running rough. What do I do, Skip? <laughs> What's what's, what's, running, what's for two years? My bike's... Motorcy- your your is bike is running bad. rough. Is oh. that what you said? It's yeah. running rough for two years? Yeah, no, it just started running. You've had it running. Put new gas in it. What kind of bike you got, Jim? What kind of bike you got? It's uh, not as cool as yours. Oh, no, come on, man. Every bike is cool. <laughs> Every bike is cool, man. You're, you're on two different. wheels and you're getting in the wind. That's cool. That's why I was telling you guys, next time you're out here, you got to take Allison up for a ride through Yosemite. But what? Yosemite. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. Yeah. You're in Yosemite. Yeah, it is beautiful up that way, I hear. I've done that ride. It's great. Yeah, we've never we've never been over there. we got to we check. went through Las Vegas or through Vegas or Nevada, and he was like, why are you on your phone? You're not looking. And I was like, I, I'm not going to stare at everything the whole time. Well, we rode from L.A. <laughs> across the desert to Vegas. 
And, uh, you know, that's a pretty long ride. And, you know, and there's like a whole lot of nothingness around. Well, yeah, it's a desert. Right. So <laughs> I, if I take a look at it for one minute even, 10 minutes up the road, it looks exactly the same. Well, yeah, but there was like a ghost town we passed by with like vultures flock circling overhead and like, you, you know. You hear the, that noise. Woo, woo, woo. Yeah, like a couple of cactus <laughs> off to the right. I'm like, hey, you missed the cactus. <laughs> Stop looking at the damn phone. Look at the cactus. I know, but I look up, I see it, and then I look back down again because I saw it. It's like a turtle crossing the road. I mean, there's stuff going on out there you need yeah, to see. Very, very exciting. <laughs> so say it again. What's the problem with your bike, Jim? Oh, it's running rough. It's been sitting for two years. Well, there you go. There's the problem. You probably got some clogged, clogged fuel line, and uh, you probably got to open up your carburetor, clean that out, get some uh, fuel line cleaner and some... Uh, you know, carburetor cleaner, and get all that all that gunk out of it. The gas when it sits that long, unless you had, did you have any kind of stabilizer in it? No, well there wasn't any gas in it. I, uh, it, it was pretty much drained. There's a little bit, and I, I filled it up with 91 octane just now. Okay, there you go. Mm. But you still getting a little. That'll clean it out. A little rough running though, right? Could be. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I it's what. Well, hop on it and do about 90. Oh, nice. <laughs> That should clean it out, right? Yeah, just, yeah, sometimes you just got to blow it out, man. That thing's been neglected for too long. Remember, Skip, when you, whatever, uh, I don't remember what the problem was with your bike, but it sounded like it was shooting at people. Oh, it was just like backfiring. <laughs> yeah, I, I had like a timing issue and I had, you know, some, I had some carburetor stuff going on. I had to get it rejetted and stuff. And, you know, it, it just, you got to maintain the bikes, you know. But yeah, for a while there it was running, it was sounding like, <laughs> like, are we getting shot at? <laughs> Yeah, it, it, it popped. <laughs> popped a little bit. Yeah. By all the guys that I ride with, where they call me, like, uh, I forget, they had some nickname for me. <laughs> when one trip we went on, right? Oh, they were like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because uh, everybody heard our. Like the Beverly Hillbillies, yeah. like, they're all like jalopy going down the road. Like, pop, 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 pop. Yeah, man. <laughs> Uh, but you know you're on you're on two wheels and you're in the wind, so you're doing something right. <laughs> oh, I love it. There's nothing like it. Yeah, there really it, isn't, it's right? Really, it's just it, it, it's really therapy, dude. Yeah, that's true. You know, it's just like it's it's kind of like having a boat. Like you know, I've had a boat also like on and off for many years, and it's it's just one of those things you can do where you're kind of like you know you you, you just get out of you get away from everything, you know. Um, the boats, e boats even more that way because you're out in an open body of water. And sometimes, like, if you're offshore, I mean, there's nothing anywhere, you know, in, in, in sight. So then you're really, you're really out there. But the bike, you go on a nice yeah, long uh, ride like what you're talking about. Me. It's great. Like it. uh, uh, we get, we're working on some good stuff, man. You're going you're gonna to be seeing something back on the air very soon. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait, seriously. Neither can my kids. So. Oh, Good. Thanks, man. We we appreciate you always being a big supporter, man. You've been around for a long time, and we, we really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Um, so no nice. You guys are easy to love. Well, thank you so much for calling. Yeah, we appreciate it. Oh, you betcha. Thanks. Talk to you guys later. Thanks, okay. Jim. Bye, Talk Jim. to you soon, bud. Take care. Right. Bye. Bye. Jim Tharp. Jim Tharp. He is another long -time one. Long-time supporter. Long-time. Long-time listener, long-time follower on Facebook and Twitter and all over the place, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. He like right from the beginning. He started Fan following us. Contractor right from the start. Yep, yep. And then he's he's always written to us or commented. So it's really nice. I feel like I know these people personally, and I we, I guess at this point we do some of them. Yeah, that's really nice. And he's one of them. Well, um, I think uh, is it like about that time? Well, yeah. You know, well, this is the thing. I wanted to take more phone calls. I've got some more things to talk about. But at this point, we're at an hour and a half, and the Home Depot is going to close soon. Well, listen, all I know is i got to get some paint because yeah. we got, a, like, a shit ton of painting to do. Yeah. And, um, we need you know. to get. Yeah, so, like, this is this job is at our house. So, yeah. like, the crew's not here. Like, we're the crew. We're the crew. So, so let's so we go. we got to go. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so, listen, with don't that. Don't forget my, it's my birthday. <laughs> so, what, what would a birthday be without <laughs> tile and paint? Right. That's pretty much what we did yeah, on my well, birthday. Yeah, birthday for you. Yeah, we ran around and bought tile, and now we're going to get paint. Yeah. It's exciting. I'm sorry. That's a birthday. Well, you know, um, I just wanted to let everybody know, with regards to the nail gun that you were talking about earlier, uh -huh. I put a link to it on Facebook, on mm -hmm. my Facebook page, uh, and there's a video that you can watch that's really, actually, you're very fucking cute and funny at the uh. end of the video. Uh, definitely worth a watch. It's also on your YouTube channel, the Skip Bedell YouTube channel. 
It's also on the front page of Allison, Skip and Allison Bedell.com, or you can even go to Skip Bedell.com. It's the same website. And you can see the videos that I posted there. I am slowly but surely getting more videos up. I have a video up on also the Juno lighting that you installed. Yeah, we have a ton of videos. We've been filming this whole process at our house here for months. And there's probably a dozen videos that still need to be aired. So yeah. we'll be putting them out little by little. Um, I just have to think, say one thing, though. It's, it's my birthday. And, like, you have a really good husband because on my birthday we went shopping for tile and now we're going to go get paint. So all I'm saying right now is that you better put out really good later when we get back from Home Depot. (laughs) But you're doing what you like to do. Why do I got to put out? Because it's my birthday. We're not supposed to be working on my birthday. No, the, the, re, the, the putting out should be because you went to Marshall's with me today. Oh, that's true. <laughs> right. Oh, my God. I totally for, I can't even believe you just – I forgot we even went to Marshall's. Holy crap. Now, you better – yeah. we're doing it twice tonight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I enjoyed that shopping trip. Oh, I got a couple man. shirts out of it. Hey, guys, want to thank you all for checking back in with us and always uh, being there and supporting us and telling your friends about Hammer Nail Podcast. We appreciate you coming back two times every week. And don't forget about the Amazon banner on our page. Please, pretty please, just go there. Drag it up to your bookmark bar. When you go to shop at Amazon, and I know you are, please click on our banner because it helps us out a lot. It helps pay towards the costs of putting out a podcast and all the time that we take to do it. We don't make any money on this, but we do it for you. We love you. Thank you so much for listening. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Bye.